David, you know, last week the conversation was, okay, you're selling off tech, we're selling off growth, we're going to go into value. It's a huge market sell-off. That lasted for like 24 hours. What are earnings going to need to prove this week to investors? Well, that things haven't really changed, which they haven't. I think there is a, a divergence that's happened in the industry where, because Facebook still has enormous clouds hanging over it regulatorily, and Google has some of that as well, Amazon and Microsoft really are completely free of that at the moment. Um, I think, the, but basically, especially in these giant companies, the FANGs, there is nothing holding them back from an economic uh, performance point of view. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll see terrific earnings, and Facebook probably would have had terrific earnings next week, except that it's probably going to suppress them as much as it can to show it's trying to do something about these terrible problems it's having. So, so it has been thought that the, the big tech companies are relatively immune from things like tariffs and geopolitics and things like that. Is that still the case? And is it really just a, a sort of an own goal, as it were, by, by a Facebook and perhaps by a Google in the way they've conducted themselves? I wouldn't think of it quite that way. I do think these companies are so deeply intertwined with the global economy that you can't say they're separated from policy issues, from geopolitics. However, they are global. They are much more immune to the vicissitudes of any individual economy. But I do think we are seeing a sea change in the attitude of the planet toward these companies, which any investor has to carefully watch because it's going to mean policy pushback that will affect even companies like Amazon and Microsoft. Vicissitudes. Vicissitudes. Nice that's job. a great word. Well, Why not supposed to say a word like that on that's TV? That's a great word. Upping our word. vocab at 8.30. So, Lisa Shaw, we talk about a sea change. Are we seeing a sea change in what you call leadership? Whenever we talk about technology, we immediately talk about leadership. Are we seeing a change? Uh, yeah, so we think that we are. So look, uh, you know, today it looks like the market is having a little bit of a, uh, a uh, fear trade where, you know, folks are worried about earnings growth. Uh, and I think that from that perspective, uh, you know, the technology sector that's going to put up the numbers, as has been uh, said, uh, you know, can, can save us for the minute. Uh, because I think earnings growth is going to be fine. Um, what is more important at this point in the cycle from our perspective uh, are price earnings multiples. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we are at in the final innings of the Fed's mm -hmm. rate hike cycle and interest rates are going up. And uh, they're going up from a real perspective because of where we are with debts and deficit. And they're going up because inflation expectations are, are, are drifting. Uh, higher. Um, higher rates means lower PEs, and I think that that always hits, you know, kind of the longer duration growth-oriented sectors, which is tech. And tech and consumer discretionary um, have remained immune um, from all of these issues for um, a good part of 2018. Uh, and our view is that ultimately they too will need to get revalued for us to find a new a new base in this market. So um, today it's about earnings. I think tomorrow it's still going to be about PE ratios, and, and I think tech uh, can be vulnerable. David? Well, I don't totally agree because I think these companies have not really shown historically they're that responsive to interest rate changes, et cetera. And if you look at particularly Facebook, uh, Google, and Amazon, the, not sorry, Facebook, uh, micro, Microsoft, Google, and Amazon, those three companies are turning their business toward the cloud more and more. All of industry, all of global industry, the global economy is turning toward the cloud. And these three companies, particularly Microsoft and Amazon, are the beneficiaries of that. So even as you have economic changes, you also have to look at the overlay of business management strategy changes that are tremendously benefiting the B2B side of these companies. Lisa, so, what do you say to that? Sorry. Uh, so I think we uh, absolutely agree. There's always going to be winners and losers in markets. I think you know the the companies that you cited certainly could uh, emerge, Salesforce is another one emerge and separate from the fangs and and continue to be dominant. Uh, but our view is that broadly as a sector, um, consumer discretionary and and probably tech uh, as a sector uh, are still going to have to uh, suffer some revaluation on on uh, on lower multiples. David, we hear about the cloud all the time. If it's a nine inning game, like the World Series is going to be tonight, okay? <laughs> Where are we in the growth of the cloud? Because it can't keep going forever. Well, it hasn't gone forever. It's relatively new. In well, the that's my of question. Things. How far I would say are we? We're in this third inning, maybe, something like that. Um, I think the, the problem with giving that kind of a metaphor is that 
the landscape of tech is so radically, the cloud is gonna be something else. 5G is gonna change the notion of what cloud computing is and the internet of things. More and more of our entire lives are gonna be sucked into these repositories of digital storage in, in what we call the cloud. And that's gonna make opportunities for new companies. It's gonna require the whole architecture to shift. So in that sense, we're in the first inning. Well, and then to that point, it brings up the whole value versus growth. Is this time different? Because if you have tech making up, you know, 10 percent, well, actually just FANG's making up 10 percent of the S&P tech at 30 percent, and then you have the value, which is energy at like 1 percent, but a huge amount of the Russell 2000 value index. How do you make that rotation unless tech just goes out to the woodshed? Yeah, so look, I, I, I don't think that it's going to go out to the woodshed, uh, but I do think that you're going to see that rebalancing because the extremes in the market uh, and those valuation dispersion is just too big mm -hmm. um, to be persistent.